Hey guys, it's Mr. Stewart here. I am uh, going to redeem myself a little bit and say uh, what this actually is. So in class I said, what is this question? Uh, I apologize for not being completely prepared for that. This question is possible to answer. I know that uh, some people have said there might not be enough information. There actually is, but it's it's all in how you set up the problem and what we assume about this problem. And so I'm going to walk you guys through how to solve this one. Uh, we talked about Wayne Bryan throwing a spear, and he had a, uh, a special device used to elongate what he had, and that's called this atlatl right here. And this atlatl looks a little bit more like this up close, but it's basically a an, an throwing arm that's been made to help throw the spear. And so um, those are uh, some pictures of that and what they look like. But the way we solve this problem, we have uh, a few things we have to know. So the first thing is we draw our picture. So if we're drawing our picture, uh, and I'm going to draw this uh, half, well, I guess I'll draw the whole thing. So we've got a spear, and we're throwing this spear from a certain point at a certain velocity. And this is going to be our VI, our initial velocity. And so this initial velocity is going to be th uh, thrown, and that's at a 35 degree angle. Thirty-five degrees, and and this vector, this vector can be uh, divided into its components. It has a y component, so v i in the y direction, and it has v in the x direction. Now you might say, why didn't I call that v i in the x direction? Well, v i in the x direction is going to stay constant because it's going sideways. There's nothing to slow it down in the sideways motion. And so what we're going to see is that vx is always going to be constant. And so we want to find what this vi is. And so that projectile, this spear, is going to be going this way and coming all the way over here and landing on the ground. And we know that this delta x, this distance here, uh, and I'm just going to write it, delta x is 201.24 meters. All right, so we've got our delta x there, and we're going to see that there's a spot right here. This spot right here at the top of this throw is the place where v, uh, uh, v in the y direction is zero. All right, so v in the y direction, this would be the final velocity in the y direction if we're looking at half of this motion. All right, so this is the final velocity, so v f in the y direction equals zero. And so that means that the v i in the y direction is straight up here. At this point, it's zero. And then over here, that v i in the y is going to be straight down. Right, and that, that straight down is going to be equal to this one that was straight up over on this side. And so that's the combination that we're, that we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> so we can actually divide any projectile motion problem into its halfway point because we can split each side. And that way we're not dealing with positive and then negative acceleration or positive and then negative velocities. And so I'm going to go backwards on that and erase those. And so we've got this VF in the y direction at zero, and that's exactly at the halfway point. So this, this point right here is the total time divided by two. It's a half of the time that it took. So where VF of y equals zero, the time is half of the total time. So now let's look at setting this up. We want to find VI. We're looking for VI. So let's say VI equals question mark. What is that initial velocity, that resultant vector that we have? So there's a few things we need to make sure that we are aware of. We know that delta x is equal to our, our v of the x times t. We know that that whole time is going to be uh, multiplied by our velocity to find that whole distance. And so that whole distance there, we can then solve for v of x. And so we solve for v of x here. So vx is equal to um, 
delta x over delta t. All right, so that's one thing we can we we are aware of. Now the other thing we can do is we can actually try to isolate for v of x and v of y over here. And what we want to do there is we say that these are our trig functions. And so our vx is going to be the hypotenuse times cosine of 35. So our v in the x direction is going to be equal to vi times cosine of theta. We know that viy is going to be equal to vi times sine of theta. And so those are two things that we now know. And so what do we also know now about Vx? We know that Vx can come down here. And so Vx is also equal to delta x over delta t. And so we've now got our V of x in ter or our Vi in terms of delta t. <clears throat> so if we're trying to find our Vi, that's what we can look for. So now, once we've gotten there, we need to try to isolate that time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find that time. And by finding the time, and I'm going to switch colors now, because now we've got our, our knowns here. We've got our, our Vx, we've got our Viy, and we've got our delta x over delta t. So now that we've got those values, we need to solve for that change in Vy. And the reason we're going to find the change in Vy is because the point from here to here, that delta V or delta Y, that delta Y is actually the, the amount of time it took to change that height is going to be based on gravity. And so when we what we can do is we can actually go in here and look at that. And so if we know that <coughs> our um let me see. Our uh acceleration or gravity is going to be our um change in velocity over our change in time. And so if we know our change in time, remember our change in time from this point to this point was t over 2. So this is going to be, uh, if we solve this for v, this is viy, change in v, which is viy, equals g times t over 2, because that's half of t. <clears throat> so our viy, which is changing from what it started out with to 0, so that's definitely our change. We've got our, our viy is equal to g times t over 2. And so we know that viy is also vi sine theta. So we've got vi sine theta equal to gt over 2. <clears throat> so once we found gt over 2, we can actually now plug in a new value. And we want to plug in a new value because we've got t now. And we can plug this t in. We don't know how to solve for t or solve what t is, but we can actually plug in t because we've got this formula right here. So this formula right here tells us that we have <clears throat> uh, vi cosine of theta is equal to delta x over delta t. So if we wanted to solve that for delta t, we have to switch these two places. And so we end up with um, uh, delta t equaling vi, sorry, delta x over vi cosine theta. And we can plug that in to our other formula. So our new formula what does orange and blue make? Maybe purplish. <clears throat> so once we've plugged this in, we plug this in for t, and so we get that vi sine theta is equal to g over 2 times delta x over vi cosine theta. 
And so now we've got enough information to actually solve this. We only have one variable that we don't know. We know thetas, we know our, our delta x, we know our g, and all we're left with is vi. So now we have to isolate for initial velocity. So our initial velocity, uh, we're going to have to multiply it by initial velocity on both sides. So we're going to end up with vi squared times sine theta is equal to g over 2 times delta x over cosine theta. And so we can now simplify and isolate further for vi. And so we can say that vi squared is equal to g times delta x divided by 2 times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And so we could plug this in now. Let's take the square root of both sides and solve. So we can do that. Let's plug our numbers in. I went too far. So when we plug our numbers in, we end up with that vi is equal to the square root of 9.8 divided by 2 times 201.24, I think that's right, yeah, 201.24 meters, this is meters per second squared, and then we've got 2 times the cosine of 35 times the sine of 35. And if we plug that into our calculator, we end up getting that our answer, the square root of that, that VI is equal to 45.8 meters per second. And so that is our initial velocity that the spear thrower threw that spear at. So I want to do this another way, and I want to show you something kind of unique. Because if you're in calculus or you've taken calculus or, or you're looking at calculus, there's something we should recognize about this little value right here. This is uh, one of the calculus uh, identities that, that you may not have seen. But basically what this ends up doing, right now we have two thetas. We have two thetas in here, and we it's hard to then to isolate for theta. So if we had been given an initial velocity and we've been given our delta x, how do we find our angle? So the way we find our angle is actually this 2 cosine 35 sine 35, this 2 cosine theta sine theta, the identity there is that this actually translates to sine of 2 theta. And so with sine of 2 theta, we could use that to actually solve for our, um, we would solve for our angle. And so um, if you were to plug that in, instead of 2 cosine 35, sine 35, you could just do sine of 2 times 35, which is 70. So sine of 70 would give us, uh, in this denominator, would give us the same answer as, uh, as we got earlier. So if there's a question that you might have to find the angle, the, that might come in handy if you were, had to uh, solve for that angle. I don't think there's any in our homework, uh, but it should be fine. I will also say that the last, uh, the last question on your projectile homework, it says it's a bonus, will probably be on a test. This is the way we answer it, and it will probably not be on a test. So just so you're aware, uh, this is the way you solve that homework, but uh, I do want you to be uh, aware of that. You've been given a distance and you've been given an angle, but you have not been given uh, any other values. And so it's all about rearranging your formulas and adjusting things. So I hope that answers your questions and I hope that helps. And I'm sorry that your uh, uh, class instruction was a little bit uh, truncated. Enjoy your long weekend.